From the counter of Dairy Queen to a Playboy centerfold to a rising star in Hollywood, Dorothy's life was a complex web of relationships, struggles, and desires. Her estranged husband, Paul Snyder, was a manipulative and controlling figure who saw her as a ticket to success and fame. He was instrumental in launching her career, but their relationship was tumultuous, marked by intense arguments and physical abuse. As Dorothy's star began to rise, she started to distance herself from Paul, but he refused to let her go. In this gripping video, we explore the tragic murder of Dorothy Stratton, a rising star in the film industry whose life was cut short in the beautiful yet haunting surroundings of Malibu in 1980. Join us as we delve into the details surrounding her shocking death, the events leading up to that fateful day, and the impact it had on Hollywood and the lives of those who loved her. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more true crime stories of iconic figures and events. In the summer of 1978, Paul Snyder, a low-life hustler whom Dorothy Stratton was dating, had professional nude photos taken of Stratton, which were sent to Playboy magazine. As Stratton was under the age of 19, the legal age of majority in British Columbia, she had to persuade her mother to sign the model release form. Snyder saw an opportunity in Stratton and began grooming her for a career in the entertainment industry. He convinced the young woman to pose for the test shots, painting images of a brighter future than the one she might have imagined for herself in Vancouver. In August 1978, Stratton moved to Los Angeles, where she was chosen as a finalist for Playboy's 25th anniversary Great Playmate Hunt. Snyder joined her in October, and the couple married in June 1979. She became Playboy's Miss August 1979 and began working as a bunny at the Playboy Club in Century City, Los Angeles. Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy, had high hopes that Stratton could have meaningful crossover success as an actress. Stratton's natural beauty and charm quickly made her a sought-after model, and she soon caught the eye of those in the entertainment industry. She landed small roles in films such as Americathon, Skate Town, USA, and Autumn Born, all released in 1979. Her rising stardom led to appearances on popular television shows like Fantasy Island and Buck Rogers in the 25th century. As Stratton's career blossomed, her relationship with Snyder began to deteriorate. He became increasingly possessive and jealous of her success, attempting to control every aspect of her life. Despite the growing tension in her personal life, Stratton remained focused on her budding acting career, which would soon lead her to a fateful meeting with renowned director Peter Bogdanovich. The tragic story of Dorothy Stratton serves as a cautionary tale about the dark side of fame and the consequences of toxic relationships. Her rise to stardom, from a small-town girl working at a Dairy Queen to a Playboy playmate, and promising actress captivated the nation. The events surrounding her life and untimely death continue to be a subject of fascination, as evidenced by the enduring interest in Death of a Centerfold, the Dorothy Stratton story. Dorothy Stratton's relationship with Paul Snyder was fraught with tension and control from the very beginning. Snyder, a small-time promoter and pimp, had discovered Stratton working at a Dairy Queen in Vancouver, and began managing her career as a Playboy model and aspiring actress. However, his possessive and jealous nature soon began to take its toll on their marriage. As Stratton's star began to rise in Los Angeles, Snyder's behavior became increasingly erratic and abusive. He attempted to control every aspect of her life, from her career choices to her personal relationships. Stratton's friends and colleagues at Playboy noticed the strain in their relationship and warned her about Snyder's toxic influence. Snyder's Svengali-like presence in Stratton's life became intolerable as her career blossomed. He was eventually barred from the Playboy Mansion, an exile that his fragile ego couldn't handle. Snyder relied on Stratton financially, as he had no other source of regular income due to his lack of a green card. This financial dependence only added to the tension in their marriage. As Stratton's acting career took off with roles in films like America Thon and Skate Town USA, Snyder grew increasingly resentful of her success. He criticized her constantly and engaged in almost daily arguments, causing Stratton immense stress. The couple's tumultuous relationship reached a breaking point when Stratton began an affair with renowned director Peter Bogdanovich, 
while filming They All Laughed in New York City. In June 1980, after a failed attempt to save their marriage, Stratton wrote to Snyder announcing their physical and financial separation. Convinced that his wife was having an affair, Snyder hired a private detective to follow her and gather evidence of her infidelity. He also began selling Stratton's Playmate of the Year prizes, including a Jaguar sports car valued at $26,000 at a loss for quick cash. As her fame grew, so did the opportunities in Hollywood. In 1980, Stratton landed her first leading role in the science fiction comedy Galaxina, directed by William Sachs. The film, though not a critical success, further cemented Stratton's status as a rising star in the entertainment industry. Her performance as the titular character demonstrated her comedic timing and potential as a leading lady. One of the most significant turning points in Stratton's acting career came when she met renowned director Peter Bogdanovich at the Playboy Mansion. Bogdanovich, known for films like The Last Picture Show and Paper Moon, was instantly smitten with the young actress. He offered her a role in his upcoming romantic comedy, They All Laughed, which would prove to be her most substantial acting role. As they worked together on the film, Stratton and Bogdanovich's relationship blossomed into a love affair. The director encouraged her to leave her controlling husband, Paul Snyder, and pursue her dreams in Hollywood. Stratton's performance in They All Laughed, alongside an all-star cast, including Audrey Hepburn and Ben Gazzara, garnered praise and hinted at her immense potential as an actress. With her star on the rise and the support of Bogdanovich, Stratton seemed poised for a successful career in Hollywood. Her natural talent, combined with her stunning looks and growing popularity, made her a sought-after commodity in Tinseltown. Tragically, it was all about to end. On August 13, 1980, Paul Snyder purchased a 12-gauge shotgun from a private seller he found in a local classified ad. Later that evening, he made several morbid remarks to his friends about the problems caused at Playboy magazine by the unexpected deaths of Playmates, including Claudia Jennings, who had died in a car accident the previous year. The following day, on August 14, Dorothy Stratton arrived at the house she once shared with Snyder in West Los Angeles for a meeting to discuss the terms of their separation. She had spent the morning conferring with her business manager about the property settlement she would offer her estranged husband that afternoon. Tragically, Snyder would brutally murder Stratton at this meeting, then take his own life, a tragic end for such a promising career. The shocking murder of Dorothy Stratton, a rising star and the 1980 Playmate of the Year, sent shockwaves through Hollywood and beyond. Her tragic story became the subject of two films, the 1981 TV movie, Death of a Centerfold, The Dorothy Stratton Story, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, and the 1983 feature film, Star 80, directed by Bob Fosse. Stratton's death also had a profound impact on those closest to her, including Playboy founder Hugh Hefner and director Peter Bogdanovich, with whom she had been having an affair. Hefner was devastated by the loss, while Bogdanovich, who had planned a future with Stratton, was left heartbroken and struggling to cope with the tragedy. The events surrounding Stratton's untimely death served as a wake-up call for many in the entertainment industry, highlighting the dark side of fame and the potential dangers of toxic, controlling relationships. Rest in peace, Dorothy Stratton.